Welcome to Freed on Business. He grew up in South Florida, has been in business here since the early 90s, and has closed over $3 billion in deals. He's seen it all. He always has an opinion, and he's always ready to share it. Informed, entertaining, and connected, he has his finger on the pulse of South Florida's business community. He's Jim Freed, and this is Freed on Business. And I just love doing this. This is so tremendous. Today, I get to talk to two of my really special friends that I've gotten to know over the years. We're going to talk about a topic that is important not only to me, but to all of us, and that's sustainability. We've got my good friend, Sean O'Hanlon, on. He's an expert in sustainable development and sustainable technologies. Of course, our old friend, Manny Johnson's on to talk about sustainable farming methods and sustainable products that we can grow in Florida. And we know what that means. Yeah, we're going to talk more hemp. Manny Johnson today. So stick with us. We'll be right back after this short message from Warren Henry, and we will talk about how you can help us bring great jobs and technology to Florida right now. everybody you all know that this is south florida's longest running business talk show and you all know that my good sponsors are my good friends warren henry high five to larry warren and eric and a special hey to samantha everybody you know when you're looking to buy or lease a car you want to get every advantage that you can that's why you have to check out warren henry land rover range rover infinity and jaguar they're all great cars and they all come with the warren henry advantage as do the cars that they sell up in gainesville which are Audis, and the cars that they sell down in the keys sold them i'm gonna go there to get my jeep hey beyond the fact that they're great cars they come with the warren henry advantage that means you get complimentary service loaner dynamic wheel protection key replacement just used that one this week guaranteed purchase offer best value guarantee in the 72 hour exchange you can take three days to make sure you like your warren henry car guess what you will so join me my mom my beautiful wife vivian lots of my friends and the number goes up every day we're all members of the warren henry family you should be too. Always the best price, always the best service. That's right. Always Warren Henry. Everybody also choose to give me a call at 305-773-6300. Why? Because when you call me, it's all about you. I've got great real estate capital. When we're done with this, I'm going to be going over and walking a new property where we're going to be introducing one of the high net worth families here in Miami to another one of the high net worth families in Miami. We're going to create an equity joint venture or to get them financed. They're a big, fancy, high-rise apartment on the water. If you're working on a real estate deal and you need capital, debt or equity, give me a call at 305-773-6300. 6300. If you need a loan for your home, I can help you there too. I'm working with uh, a European national right now. Give me a call at 305 773 6300. Why? Because when you call me, never did this before, it's always all about you. Welcome back to Freedom Business. Connect with us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Jim Freed or at Freedom Business. And on Instagram at Jim Freed One. Now back to your host, Jim Freed. All right, we are back, and we are on with two of my favorite people. We're on with Manny Johnson, and we are on with uh, Sean O'Hanlon. Sean, welcome to the show for the first time. Manny, welcome back. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Now, Sean, let's talk a little bit about your background because I'd like to set the table first. Um, besides being one of my numerous friends that worked for DARPA. Tell us a little bit about your background and why, um, what your pers perspective is on um, sustainability. My educational foundation is in marine biology uh, through the University of Miami. And, and, I, and I, then I joined the Air Force and became a systems engineer at first. And those two things never crossed each other until 
several years ago, going back to about 2008, when I was running the American Biofuels Council and was investigating various feedstocks for biofuel. Algae came across my radar, and I met a gentleman at a conference who really opened my eyes to algae technology and the way it could be applied and used not just for producing biofuels, but for uh, for wastewater remediation, for carbon capture, uh, and for producing a whole host of high value uh, products from the the rev- from the stream, from the al- basically from an algae stream. Uh, the light bulb went on then and there, and I knew that, that algae is absolutely something that is going to be a major driver in the bioeconomy going forward. So then, um, what is sustainability? Why do I care? I, I have three pillars for sustainability. I know different people uh, define it differently. I define sustainability as energy security, water security, and food security. If you do not have those three things, there is no sustainability. Energy um, security, goes, water security, and what was the third one? Because it's tough to hear you a little bit. Sorry, food security. Food security. Okay, no problem. Um, Manny, tell us a little bit about sustainability from your perspective, from the agricultural perspective? Well, I think that it's, you know, we can go back uh, 12,000 years and start talking about how hemp was being used for uh, remediations of soil. It was being used for creation of papers, textiles, ropes, um, drafts of the Declaration of Independence were made on hemp. I mean, it is, uh, it's a, it's an amazing amazing plant it has the ability to pull toxins out of the soil and uh it's a great rotation crop um if you're you know if you have you know what you do if you're growing anything in the united states or yeah let's talk about the united states because we're the most probably the most backward country in terms of the great of of the of the industrialized countries in the world in our agricultural systems uh um, our, our food supply is, is very, very, in my opinion, unsafe uh, compared to Europe and compared to uh, um, even Canada. Um, I believe that hemp will change everything. I mean, it's, it's, you know, we were growing hemp up until 1930 then we stopped growing it because for some reason we we threw it in the same pot as marijuana which became like heroin uh, class schedule one uh, um, controlled substance so so hemp just stopped happening until we really needed it in world war ii we grew we grew 45,000 acres of hemp okay to produce products that the that that the military needed um it's 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 being used now uh now that it's been legalized in the united states and let's just talk about that for right now uh we can base our history on other countries and all that i'm i'm discussing we can base the history on what we can do but reality is is let's look and see what's being done today and what's being done today is is in terms of sustainability because that's what we're talking about today um it's being used to remediate some of the lakes uh, that have been polluted by some of the largest corporations in the United States that were not held responsible for their pollutions. And uh, we are planting hemp along the shores of those those lakes to remediate that soil. Um, there are some of the most toxic landfills in the United States that hemp is being planted on. Uh, we got that idea from Russia when Chernobyl occurred. Uh, the Russians used... Uh, a hemp to pull some of the radiation out of the soil and found it to be very successful. Now, now, um, Sean, what do you think is the biggest challenge to Florida on a sustainability um, circumstance? What is our biggest challenge right now? A lot of words thrown around, but what's the number one challenge? I'm sorry, what was it you said? Something being thrown around? What, there are a lot of words thrown around. People ah, talk about okay. sea level rise. People talk about saltwater intrusion. People talk about climate change affecting crop rotation. What's the number one sustainable issue that Florida faces today? Water. 
it, it's all about water for us. We're, we're surrounded by it, and it's all and it's literally bullet, bullet, right beneath our feet. And 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 yes, you can tie um, sea level rise, saltwater intrusion to water security for the entire state of Florida. I mean, and it's not just along the coastline. I, I think a lot of people keep misunderstanding that sea level rise is not just going to affect the coast of Florida. It is going to affect every part of Florida because we are on limestone that is porous and that water is going to go everywhere. So it's going um, to come up from the bottom? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the water the water table is going to rise. As, as the sea level rises, the water table is going to rise. Absolutely. Well, Manny, what's the impact on agriculture that rising water table? Well, that's been an issue for you for for years and years. When you start to gush, up. I remember when I first started farming, we would dig wells, and they would be maybe like uh, uh, forty to sixty feet deep. And then ten years later, we were having to dig two hundred feet to get down into the aquifer, the limestone bed that. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, talking about. You know, I I grew up here. And we were in the '70s doing alternate lawn waterings and car wa and car washing. So it's been a positive for fifty years. Positively, and, and no problem. And we've never addressed it. We've just pushed it to the side and sort of kicked the can down the road. And we're at a point now to where we can keep kicking the can down the road, which we very well, uh, you know, some people might be in favor of doing that because it might cost a little bit of money to change some of these habits but you know we live on this incredible planet and we're talking about going to other planets and screwing them up i think that there should be like a rule that you got to fix your planet before you can go to another one and uh no harm yes there you go and you know it's like florida had the there's some great solutions that we have here but Exactly like Sean said, we're so we are a, you know, we are a, a, a peninsula on on top of a, a limestone bed that is under that's a, that's on top of a, of intruding and intruding salt water. So I, we, have to, we have to use, you know, it's like, you know, it, it rains a lot here. We should be reclaiming that water as much as possible, re reusing it, purifying it, because it's like there's a yin and a yang effect. We get all this rain, we get all this rain. Um, I proposed something to the, I was awarded a Phillips Foundation Award 12 years ago uh, because I came up with this idea of taking the existing water pipes that we have throughout the United States and we use them so valuably for uh, bringing oil around the country. Why don't we use those to move water around the country from areas that are being flooded to areas that are having droughts? Australia is a beautiful example of doing that. Australia moves water around 3,000 miles. Well, um, let's take a break right here. We'll come back. And what I'd like to do is talk about um, what some of the solutions for these issues are and uh, some of the careers and jobs that would be available if we would just go into the green economy in a just quiet, easy way. We'll be right back after this with our two experts, Sean and Manny. Reagan, take it away. everybody we're south florida's longest running business talk show i want to thank our friends at warren henry for being our sponsors since 2012 and remember when you're looking to buy or lease a car you want every advantage that you can that's why you have to check out warren henry land rover range rover infinity and jaguar up here at their new store at 151st in biscayne down in the keys they sell all their name brands up in gainesville they sell Audis. What do they all have in common? Well, they're all great nameplates, and they all come with the Warren Henry advantage. That means you get, <clears throat> excuse me, that means you get complimentary service loaner, dynamic wheel protection, key replacement, guaranteed repurchase offer, best value guarantee in the 72-hour exchange. You can take three full days 
to make sure you like your car. If you don't, you can return it. You won't return it. And by the way, I used the key replacement just this week to get a new battery. Uh, remember, join me, my mom, and my beautiful wife, Vivian, and lots of my friends. We're all members of the Warren Henry family. You should be, too. Always the best price. Always the best service. Always Warren Henry. Carlson from Carlson Integrated. You know, a lot of our clients find that they can do anything, but not really everything. We are always excited to jump in and help. So whether you need another set of hands for a project or even comprehensive marketing management, our team of marketing mavens would love to have a conversation with you to see if we are the right fit. We do everything from logo and design work to email outreach and social media to writing and thought leadership. And here's a fun one. We are now offering our fabulous ebook of top 10 marketing tips on our website for free. So head over to carlsonintegrated.com and grab a copy today. And please always let us know how we can help. My email is Becca, that's B-E-K-A-H at carlsonintegrated.com. That's B-E-K-A-H at carlsonintegrated.com. And hey, everybody, give me a call if I can help. Jim Free, that's right, I'm helping four nationals and U.S. residents refinance and buy homes all the time. I just bring my $3 billion worth of real estate experience down to them, and we help them. We get it done. It ain't easy, and believe me, it's sometimes harder than the big commercial deals I do. Got a $100 million bridge loan. I'm doing a condo inventory loan. I'm helping raise recap money for a medical uh, medical office facility company, and I'm also helping another friend of mine lift his apartment project by bringing him debt and equity. $150 $150 million deal there. So give me a call at 305-773-6300 if I can help you. Why? Because when you call me, it's always all about you. Welcome back to Freedom Business. Connect with us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Jim Freed or at Freedom Business and on Instagram at Jim Freed One. Now, back to your host, Jim Freed. All right, we're back. We're back with Sean O'Hanlon, uh, one of the smartest guys I know, and Manny Johnson, also one of the smartest guys I know. They're both a couple of the nicest guys I know, and they both know about sustainability. So welcome back, guys. Thanks, Jim. Now, let's talk a little bit about, uh, we talked about water is the biggest issue for sustainability. We set everybody's credentials. Manny's a big agronomist. Sean's a big, smart guy. Uh, biomechanical engineering, UM, the Army, DARPA, blah, 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 blah. Um, so now... What are we going to do about all that? Sean, you got some ideas. Why don't you share them? Uh, algae technologies for bioremediation um, and, and for producing high value products. The, if, if we started uh, installing bioreactors, either in conjunction with or downstream from wastewater treatment plants, we could, we could clean that water, not down to parts per million, but uh, parts per billion and capture all the dissolved CO2 in that water that's being pumped out. Uh, that's, that's one. The other thing is that could be done is the, the canals where the water is being dumped from Lake Okeechobee, put algae bio, algae reactors along those canals. Well, and same thing. And that water would be cleaner when it got to the ocean than when it went into Lake Okeechobee. That's how good algae technologies are. The other technologies I advocate and I think are, are, are of very strong promise and real potential for Florida, bamboo, biochar, cannabis across the board, full legalization of cannabis for all kinds of products, um, and coconuts. There's a lot of interesting things that can be done in, in a biocomposite space between cannabis, coconuts, and bamboo. It, it just, the, you, you bind those three things together, you put them under heat and pressure, um, and you come out with strong products. You know, I grew up in Florida and I'm thinking about palm trees and they have this like fiber thing and I've seen it and it seems strong. So what you're talking about is putting this together like carbon fiber and just layering it on top of each other until it really very similar, Jim. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and there's a holiday in express last night. 
There's actually a company, and I forget exactly where it is. I, it's not here in the U.S., but it's in another place. I believe it's in Asia. And they started doing it with coconut fibers. They started pressing them into pallets, of all things, so that, so that they would stop using wood for pallets, and they didn't need to use plastic for the pallets. And they, it turns out that the pallets they're producing with coconut fibers are stronger than either the, either the wood or the plastic. I wouldn't doubt so it. They're really, really, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a real advantage. Manny, he just blew my mind. I'm, your, I'm sure you're teed up to do the same thing. What would you say would be the number one solution and approach that we should take to uh, becoming sustainable on a water basis? Well, I think the ideas are, you know, I, I, I love hearing what Sean just mentioned about uh, uh, his ideas on sustainability because they're in a different area than mine and so you combine this two things together and it's like a, a yin yang type situation I love that um, I I was going to Europe I had a plant nursery in Europe in the 1990s and uh, we had to recycle there was no option everything had to be recycled there you had to put things in certain uh, batches that had to be redone. You had to. You had to. Uh, um, you, you had you had irrigation areas set up that would, would reclaim water. Um, this algae technology, I I know a lot about that, and, and it, it, it it can open up doors for here. Um, I just think a lot of this has to fall back on. You know, we've got these monstrous landfills where we, we create more garbage and more waste in our country than the entire world put together. And that, that's, that's a scary thought. It's you know what's a scary thought to me? Scary thought to me is the number of Amazon boxes that are used every day. How do we get past that? Hey, hey Jim, if I could add something real quick. Oh, please. Um, please, please. The, 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 I want to I want to give a, a short, a, a quick list of the high value products that can be produced from algae feed food fibers fuels and fertilizer all right those five things yes all from all from algae and by the way that's not just a single species of algae that can be from freshwater algae or saltwater algae yeah the, the, grow the algae say that again can we grow the algae Absolutely. Oh, yeah. As a, as a matter of fact, I, Florida is the ideal state for algae production. Well, we see that when it flows out in uh, Port St. Lucie. But my real question is, will, is there a way to address the toxic algae problem with good algae? Yes, you absolutely ah! you got it. You're fighting fire with fire. Yeah. You, you, if, you pull all the, if you pull the nutrients that are running off from agriculture... And you let the algae absorb the good algae absorb those nutrients okay then you rob the bad algae of its of its food for growth and yeah that that problem it immediately goes away can i ask a dumb question no such thing why aren't we doing this now in florida um i will i will give you a really short i don't know why i i I That's advocated this, I advocated this to both um, Charlie Crisp and um, Charlie, Charlie back when Charlie Bronson was the, the Secretary of Agriculture for the state of Florida. At that time, the EPA was breathing down Florida's neck on water quality standards. And this was going back about 10 years. I I presented to them, I told them that there were technologies and companies available then that could clean up the water produce create jobs and produce revenue for the state and it would not cost the state a dime they wouldn't have to they, they wouldn't have to you know shell out anything and i was told at that time that they were more interested in fighting the epa than solving the problem okay that's a very intelligent solution that certainly is indicative of what appears to be our current governmental posture wasn't I nice the way I said that? Manny? I would be. Manny, roll on. You just heard okay. him talk, and I know you got an opinion on that stuff. 
No, no, no. I would. Your comments and, and his comments are, are very kind. Yeah, um, well, they are. They are. I think that uh, people should have be held responsible. I think our politicians and the people who are making a lot of decisions are so influenced by so, you know, uh, business cannot be sustainable. You cannot run a business. I don't care how what size it is. It can't be sustainable if you don't have natural resources to deal with. And if, if, if you create a business model that down the road, 20, 30, 40 years is going to destroy Lake Okeechobee, for example, or Lake Apopka, things like that, which have happened. It sure has. Really thinking very short-sighted. How can we save Lake Apopka, Manny? Well, the ways you do it is is um, this algae this this algae process is is definitely a, a very very positive positive thing to be doing because it's overflown it, it's overgrown with algae. Lake Okeechobee is the same situation. Um, I loved one of the comments that uh, Sean just made. I made a quote on it: nutrients coming off from agriculture. Why are there nutrients coming off of agriculture? We can grow organically. My grandfather did not have pesticides. He did not have fertilizers. Yet he grew tomatoes bigger than my hands. Manny, you, you know, I, I imagine you know this, but, I am, uh, but I'm also uh, pretty certain that the overall majority of listeners and viewers would not have any clue to this. One of the major problems that Florida is facing, aside from the water quality, and water availability is we are losing our soil for agriculture. Sure. We do not build soil in this state. Um, I had a meeting oh, quite a Say while ago. Say it again. You, you, it's tough to hear you. What's the issue with the soil? Is it erosion or what? It, it, is, it is partly erosion, Jim, but it's mostly due to the fact that we have an ornamental nursery um, you know, such a strong, big ornamental nursery industry sure. that, that we're scooping up the soil, scooping up the dirt, putting it in pots, and literally shipping it out. We're shipping Wait a minute. It away. You're telling me that we're shipping our most valuable resource out, sort of like other people who ship water-based products out. They're shipping their water out. Manny, you have to know about this. You're a freaking uh, ornamental plant guy in the beginning. What's going on here? Well, the thing is, is that People have this erroneous idea that if you take dirt and you add perlite, vermiculite, and all of these artificial, you know, uh, ingredients to it, that you've created soil. Okay, that soil requires uh, nitrates, potassium, every type of, uh, of nutrient that a plant needs to live. Why don't you use microbials? On one in one teaspoon of microbial, there's a billion microbials. One billion. Right. Right. We should we should be we should be building soil, rebuilding soil, man, with biochar, uh, with compost, uh, with with you know with uh, worm casting, you know, with all those really really nutrient rich but healthy soil, um, healthy you know healthy components of the soil. Uh, I I I. I I try to keep in mind the business perspective of it always because when I got into this um, a long time ago now, that was my interest. Everybody else was talking about clean, green, renewable, sustainable, and I, and I got that, and I'm on board with that. I, I am, I do. I, I, I think I've been an environmentalist probably since I was 10 years old. At the same time, I understand that there, that this, there needs to be an economic driver to it because nothing moves the needle faster than getting people... Um, you know, hitting them in the wallet. You know, one yeah, they help them call. make money with it. Listen, I want to take a break and I want to talk about industries and I want to talk about jobs and I want to talk how we can make money with this because we can. I grew up in Florida when we led the country on thoughtful ideas. Why can't we do that again? We'll get the answer in two minutes. Riggin, rock it.
everybody. Here we go. We're South Florida's longest running business talk show, and we're about to talk agribusiness with two of the experts. It's tremendous. I hope you're listening. But before we do, I want to thank our sponsor. Since July 28, 20, since July 2012, Warren Henry's been our sponsor. Hundreds of episodes, thousands of interviews. I want to thank Larry, Warren, and Eric for helping me bring this tremendous content to our community. When you're looking to buy or lease a car, you want to get every advantage that you can. That's why you have to check out Warren Henry, Land Rover, Range Rover, Infinity, and Jaguar. They're all exceptional cars, and they all come with the Warren Henry Advantage. What is the Warren Henry Advantage? Complimentary service loaner, dynamic wheel protection, key replacement, guaranteed purchase offer, best value guarantee, 72-hour exchange, all of those, all of them. And by the way, you can get them also with their store in Gainesville that sells Audis and the one down in Key West that sells all the different name brands. That's, of course, where I'm going to go to get my Jeep. So join me, my friends, my mom, my beautiful wife, Vivian. We're all members of the Warren Henry family. You should be, too. It's a tremendous thing. Always the best price, always the best service, always Warren Henry. totally mentioned that the two people on our show today are some of the kindest people I know. Sean just reached out to me, didn't know me from Adam, and came up and said hi. Manny's just a tremendous loving person. I know you are too, Sean, but you're a little bit more of a tough guy. Anyway, <laughs> give me a call, because I can help. 305-773-6300. I'm helping all kinds of people. Got a, got a referral today from a realtor friend of mine. I haven't seen a realtor for three years. She called me today. She had a client from Croatia from Croatia. I'm going to bank that guy. Give me a call. I'm going to help him buy his condo at 4100 Collins. Not kidding. Won't tell you which unit. Got other clients that I'm helping get bridge loans. Commercial, residential. I'm going to go do a, a high-rise apartment. Maybe it'll even be a condo that I can move into. So give me a call at 305-773-6300. Especially if you're not able to get your deal done. Why? Because when you call me, it is always all about you. Welcome back to Freedom Business. Connect with us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Jim Freed or at Freedom Business and on Instagram at Jim Freed One. Now, back to your host, Jim Freed. All right, we're on today with Sean O'Hanlon and Manny Johnson. We're talking about the dirty facts you don't know about sustainability. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, we were talking about the different types of products that can be uh, designed here. We were talking about algae and the different uh, things that can do. What I want to talk about now is the type of jobs that we can bring to Florida. Because let's face it, as Sean was saying at the end of the last segment, if we don't create a way for people to make money with this, no one will pay attention. Sean, how many jobs are involved here? Thousands. There's thousands of jobs. Uh, and, and probably Just in Miami alone. Uh, Good jobs? Central. What's that? Say that again. Good jobs, careers. Yes, yeah, very you know, very good paying jobs. Jobs that start in the fifteen to twenty dollar an hour range and go for, go up from there. Um, you know, Francis Suarez has said that he is determined to. Who is Francis Miami. Suarez? I'm sorry, Mayor Francis Suarez, uh, uh, Mayor of Miami, has said that he is determined to turn Miami into a technology hub, and and I support that. I agree with that. I think that would be great. Now, here's the thing that, that he can jump on. Biology is technology. And the bioeconomy is a growth industry. It's been going in Europe for about five years now, and it's, it's going strong. And this is Florida's opportunity, and Miami in particular, um, to become a center for that. There are people who want to turn Miami into um, the hub, the center for carbon trading, accounting, um, goods and services. Uh, companies, uh, not just across the country, but for the world, and, you know, the region and the world. Um, and, and, it, and it really is the, a great place to do it. Listen, my niece at Georgia Tech is dating a young man who's studying biomechanical engineering. I'm actually encouraging that. Manny, 
what are the jobs in the agricultural field? And I've got to believe that they pay pretty well too. Well, you know, Jim, think about this. I mean, you don't have a job. Almost any legal job is a good job. Today, yes. Yes, and we need to talk about today because today will lead to tomorrow. And today is really the only day that we have right now. We don't I love you, Manny. I'm so glad so you're talking about here, right now. Okay? Okay. There are a lot of people unemployed in Central Florida, and I don't I don't know about the Miami area. I just know where I'm living, and I'm seeing people that are destitute here. Yes, Manny, we both are. We're both based in places where the economy is driven by tourism. Tourism tourism hasn't come back. Although I will tell you that I think that real estate in both the in, in Florida particularly will come back stronger because I don't see tourists going and eating. Um, you know, going back and eating in their hotels. So I think restaurants in, in the tourist areas will also come back stronger than maybe other areas. I agree with you with the real estate deal, and I'm just going to throw you in my two cents because that's all it's worth, is the idea that uh, uh, what you're seeing right now in this real estate boom in Florida is the fact that people are up north, that it's cold, and number two, they're in big, big cities, and they're seeing what COVID does in big, big cities. Okay, and the in the the this craziness in our country that's divided us so much and you know you got to mention it because it's real so people are going to continue to move into florida florida does not have a state income tax it's like why not move here if i had a business which i do it's stationed here okay uh, a couple of things i'd like to mention um uh part of the problems we have is subsidies we our government subsidizes agricultural industry not to grow certain crops okay you're paid not to grow it this year that makes no sense um, i know in the 90s i was given tax incentives to set up uh production facilities to to make ceramic pots for the plants that i sold to cvs walgreens home depot nationwide virtually every grocery store in the united states canada and europe I was given subsidies to move that over to China. Walmart used to have on their trucks, pr proudly made in the USA. Where did that go? I think we need to encourage job creation back in this country. We need to put tariffs on, you know, foods that are being produced that are being subsidized in, in, in South American and Latin American countries. Um, you know, so that so that we have a, a, a not a competitive edge, but let's just give give ourselves a level playing field, okay? And let's see if we can get the USDA uh, and the like state of Florida's Department of Agriculture, which to me the Department of Agriculture, I could deal with their rules and not have any issues whatsoever in shipping a box of plants out of state. But in order to ship one box across federal lines. You have to have your your certificate of nursery from the state has to be on the outside of the box in the invoice, but you also have to have this aphid which is from the, this aphid stamp, which is from the USDA. Guess what that meant? That meant you could have no burrowing nematode. Which is how you're everything. So I was literally having to treat my my plants with so many pesticides and and you know we were talking earlier about parts per million with uh with certain rings and parts per billion now we're into parts per trillion with with some of the monsanto products okay and we were told in the beginning it was parts per million you can see we're using that stuff around employees we're putting it on food substances people are eating this stuff for the last 30 years we wonder why cancer is so crazy and i mean it's like we just have to get our act together and say, okay, I love the way my grandfather grew. There, there wasn't pesticides. He had his compost patch, okay? He had tomatoes that I remember tasting, and they, they really tasted good. I take a tomato and just slice it off, put a little, you know, I would just eat a raw tomato because they were so, cucumbers were actually sweet. Listen, 
I have my favorite one of my favorite shows on Discovery Channel is Light Below Zero. Last week they they took all of the burned uh, wood and put it into their uh, into their uh, their vegetable garden along with their compost. So I get it, guys. I just Bingo. saw it on TV. Bingo. You know, these are things that just need to we need to get past this idea with the the nursery industry in Florida is being killed. The citrus industry has been is, is already been devastated. The cattle industry, which is leaving one of the largest carbon footprints of anything else in the world, is not making a profit, yet it's continuing to leave this monstrous carbon footprint. Manny, let's let's talk about this for a second because while we were talking, I used my magic phone. I always do. And I reached my favorite lobbyist, or we'll call him professional requester of doodads from government. Guess what? He thinks he can get us incentives for things like a hemp-based farm to provide uh, vertically integrated CBD products that are, you know, that we're going to sell across the country. Now, this stuff can be, can be, he just said, let's chat later. Okay. So, so Manny, there are government incentives for these types of businesses that people know how to how to find them and what i want to talk about after the next break is how people don't know how to find them and i also want to talk about how we can bring this to our state and create not only jobs and businesses for for the people that have jobs and businesses but also the people have been left behind the people of color i would like to talk about how we can make this a democratization of our agriculture and sustainable environment so stick with me that'll be next and it'll lead us into next week's topic which is all about access for the real estate business community for the same demographic we're we'll right back after this All right, everybody. Boy, was that good news. More COVID vaccine being released. Yes, everybody make sure that you don't jump the line that grandma gets it first. Remember, the South Florida's longest running business talk show. And I want to thank our friends at Warren Henry, been our sponsor since 2012. Remember when you're looking to buy or lease a car, you want to get every advantage that you can. That's why you have to check out Warren Henry, Land Rover, Range Rover, Infinity and Jaguar, up in Gainesville, they sell Audis. Down in the Keys, they've got them all. What do they have in common? Well, they're all great cars, and they all come with this big list of benefits called the Warren Henry Advantage. You get complimentary service loaner. I love the cars, they're always clean. Dynamic wheel protection. If you hit the, the thing, your your wheel on the on the curb, they polish it up for you. Key replacement. I went there yesterday, they replaced that battery in the key. Guaranteed purchase offer. Best. Best value guarantee in a 72-hour exchange. When you buy your car, you can take three days to return it if you don't like it. Nobody does that. Nobody returns it. So join me, my mom, and my beautiful wife, Vivian, lots of my friends. We're all members of the Warren Henry family. You should be, too. Always the best service. Always the best price. Always Warren Henry. Carlson from Carlson Integrated. You know, a lot of our clients find that they can do anything, but not really everything. We are always excited to jump in and help. So whether you need another set of hands for a project or even comprehensive marketing management, our team of marketing mavens would love to have a conversation with you to see if we are the right fit. We do everything from logo and design work to email outreach and social media to writing and thought leadership. And here's a fun one. We are now offering our fabulous ebook of top 10 marketing tips on our website for free. So head over to carlsonintegrated.com and grab a copy today. And please always let us know how we can help. My email is Becca, that's B-E-K-A-H at carlsonintegrated.com. That's B-E-K-A-H at carlsonintegrated.com. 
Hi, and I'm Jim Fried, and I care. So call me at 305-773-6300. Why? Because when you call me, it's all about you. I'm helping residential brokers close real estate deals. I'm helping friends of mine that have non-W-2 income buy their dream house to keep their kids safe and off the streets so they can grow their family. I'm helping friends of mine realize their commercial real estate dreams by putting them together, equity and debt, to go vertical on 300-unit apartment building here on Biscayne Bay. And I'm doing a lot more interesting stuff too. So give me a call at 305-773-6300. Why? Because when you call me, it's always all about you. Welcome back to Freedom Business. Connect with us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Jim Freed or at Freedom Business. And on Instagram at Jim Freed One. Now, back to your host, Jim Freed. All right, we're back. We're back with my good friend, Sean O'Hanlon, and my good friend, Manny Johnson. We're here talking about sustainability and jobs and, and making Florida a better place for all of us. Now, um, let's see, Sean, I actually forget where we left off. Where were we? <laughs> we're talking about uh, projects, development projects and project financing. Okay. So how do we get these things done, Sean? Is there money out there for this? I've already been texting my friends that do lobbying. There's lots of government stuff for this. Does it go unclaimed? I just have a I just had an interesting conversation the other day with a friend who here in Miami, um, who has been dealing with the Biscayne Bay um, Task Force, mm-hmm. um, you know, for 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 stopping the the, the the slow death of the bay. And yeah, I know. Look, I've lived here forever. I see it from my apartment. It's disgusting. I see the right. big feet boats cutting the grass beds every day as they go to Michael's Genuine on the Bay. It disgusts me. Well, since we have a new mayor of Miami-Dade County, Daniela Levine Cava, um, it is one of her one of her big things, and she just appointed a um, a Biscayne Bay. Yeah, I saw uh, Biscayne Bay Zarina officer. Yeah, uh, Irela Begay. and it is my understanding that there are that there are there are projects in the works for companies to come in and start remediating the bay part of remediating the bay is remediating the bay is, is kind of a misnomer way because what you have to do is you have to cut off the nutrient runoff coming from the canals and the septic tanks and the dog poop that runs in there yeah look, and, and look i was there when they when the when they when the when the fish were dying and everything was dying and their view of remediation was putting the the fire boats out there to pump water out and oxygenate the water it's like the fountains that they have in the eutrophied lakes up in orlando it's disgusting there's no global plan and this has been known for 50 years and what it looks like it looks like that's about to change it, 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 from, from what i'm hearing uh, from what i've been told it looks like it, it's a ser- it's going to be a serious undertaking going forward Manny, how about Central Florida? What's going on up there about sustainability and mitigation of what's been happening? Looks like that that. Give me two minutes to tell you a story. Go. Storyteller, okay. I, Go I, ahead. I Go ahead. We've got like five or six minutes it. left. Take your time. Okay. I'm going to tell you a two-minute story. I got this picture of like four plants, four, four pictures. And they were like maybe showing me a hundred plants, hemp plants that were being grown by a farmer, Florida. He sent that to me because he said, I, I heard you're a hemp expert and I'm a professional nurse from then. I'm a, I've been growing organically since 1979. I've been growing hemp, industrial hemp since 1979 in Canada. Uh, I just wanted your opinion on what I'm growing here. Uh, he sent me the picture of the plants. I It was late at night. I enlarged the plants with a magnifying glass because I was looking for brown spots. I couldn't find any brown spots on his plants. I couldn't find any. I said, before you sent this picture to me, did you go out and remove all the brown leaves on your plants? Because in the nursery industry, the first thing you do in the morning is you walk through the nursery and remove all the brown plant or the yeah, the brown leaves and the dead plants. And he goes, Well, Manny he says, I no, this is just a picture. I just want you to tell me whether I'm doing a good job or not. 
I said, what are you doing tomorrow? I drove down there. It was a two hour drive from where I live. He grows everything organically. He, he creates his own soils. He uses his microbials. There is no fertilizer. The, uh, he recycles the water that he uses. And he got all of these methods because he is part Indian. Okay. Uh, let me ask you a question. Up you in Canada. From the subcontinent or Native American? Um, he was, he's now living uh, Native oh. American. No, oh, I'm okay. Thank you. So he's a Native American and he's growing with tribal methodologies? He's growing with common sense. Instead of using these bottles that you buy from these chemical companies, he, he's using the land, okay? He creates his own soils. He doesn't use dirt. He doesn't, like, okay, most ornamental nurseries will have these mixers where they have, you know, they'll have, like, dump trucks full of dirt brought in every day. That, that does come from up north, like, can you stealing, eat? Stealing I mean, what, what's wrong with Florida, Pete? I know what's wrong with Florida, Pete, because once it dries out, it's harder to wet again. So what you do is you, all you have to do is just grade it up a little bit better and it won't have that issue. But we're bringing peat from, from Canada. We're bringing soils from all our, our vermiculite, perlite, which are all damaging to the environment. Uh, we're growing most of our plants now. Um, I'd say probably 90% of the marijuana plants are being grown in Rockwell. Okay, Rockwell is fiberglass. You know what fiberglass does? It, it, fiberglass is, is mesothelioma. The landfills in California will no longer accept Rockwell. Yet, we're accepting it in Florida. Landfills are another issue we can talk about sometime. But I just want to tell you about this guy sends me these two pictures. I look at them. And from that, we're opening up a business because this is exactly how I, I love doing things. I, I'd like to ask a I'd three like to ask question. If Go I, ahead. Manny, if I, if I can, I'd love to ask a question, direct question to Manny. Manny, where do you see the cannabis industry as a whole in Florida in short to midterm? In short to midterm, I'll give you my definition. It's five to ten years. Okay, in five to ten years, uh, it's very hard to tell the politics in Florida. Right now, there's a, there's there are, I would tell you that, and I, I'm... I'm telling you this based on 15 states where I've gotten that by licenses, okay, on probably four countries that I've served. I helped write 65% of Florida's laws, so I know them very, very, you know, I know what the law was written, and I know what they're doing. Two totally different things. Mm -hmm. You know, for a perfect example, um, we were, you know, the, the, the original law, the Compassionate uh, Marijuana Act of 2014, which Rick Scott signed, said that every batch of marijuana would be tested by an independent third-party lab before it was released to the public. There was no independent third-party lab in Florida until last year. Right. So then, you know what, then let me rephrase my question, if I may. Where do you think the cannabis industry could be in Florida in five to ten years. Okay, cannabis now. You asked me a different. Cannabis is marijuana and hemp. Yeah, I can Yeah, I, 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 I use cannabis the umbrella term because I because because I know that hemp is a is a you know strain of cannabis, and I I know that there are valuable value products from the various strains of cannabis. So that's why I use the umbrella term cannabis. Okay, no, I'm glad you used that because I would tell you that I do believe that uh, cannabis will dwarf marijuana simply because you can build houses with it. You can make a plastic substitute. You can make papers. It remediates the soil. Okay, marijuana is a commodity. Okay, I can show you this with graphs. I can show you the price per pound dropping and dropping and dropping all over the United States because I get it every week. Um, so the, the, the marijuana is going to go down. It's going to become more competitive. Florida is going to have to learn how to grow something called a good bud in order to attract people. In terms of medicines, there's being so little medical research being done and so few dollars, which is what it was designed for. They're calling it marijuana, yet no one in any dispensary in the United States is mandated to have any education 
in medicine. I don't understand that. I like the idea of having people with knowledge, like a pharmacist, that I can ask questions to. Believe me, I'm a marijuana component, or, or, or I'm a proponent. I positively am. I would not have gotten into this industry if I did not see the magic it does for children with seizure disorder and veterans with post-traumatic uh, uh, post -traumatic, uh, PTSD or traumatic brain injury or post-concussion injury. I've seen it. The federal government had a patent on it in 1999, cannabidiol as a neuroprotectant and antioxidant. It is real. The largest research institute in the world produced the studies for that, which is the National Institute of Health. Cannabis, when we get into hemp, we can do we can substitute a lot of the pollutants. Hemp is recyclable. We can make a plastic substitute that instead of lasting, you know, forever in our landfills, it only lasts two years or it lasts a year and then it biodegrades. The two largest growers of hemp in Germany are Audi and BMW, and they do it for the plastic parts of their cars. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, clothing, the largest manufacturer in China of hemp is, Z is, Z is Zara, um, which is a clothing manufacturer that started in Spain. And I actually have met the owner of that company. He's a really cool guy because he still uses a wooden desk inside the factory he started. Yet he's one of the wealthiest people in the world. Uh, he takes hemp and he mixes it with silk and he makes a textile that is so righteous. Uh, I could talk about this all day. I would tell you, I totally believe hemp will be at least 10 times larger than marijuana could ever dream of being because you can make. You have a, you have a, you have a dollar number for that? Or out of a range? Pardon? You have a dollar number for that? A, a dollar range? Um, I can tell you what some of the intelligence communities are coming out with in terms and they're they're pretty good with the numbers uh you know um you know we're looking at within five years we're looking at 36 billion dollars and that's realize this too the illegal market for marijuana is 10 times the lot the the size of the legal market we have no idea what they're doing and we have a general idea but we have no idea of the dollars most people don't realize that legal medical marijuana or recreational or uh, adult use is the, is the term we're using now. Um, the ta federal taxation on marijuana, which is a controlled substance, one is 80%. So guys, $1.80 $1 goes to the government. Guys, we're going to have to cut it off here. We're going to come back and do this again. I think we're just scratching the surface, but I want to thank everybody for being on today. Sean, thank you so much for being on. Manny, thank you so much for being on. I'll look for the uh, the uh, paperwork uh, on the deal you were talking about uh, so that we can work together on that as we discussed. Sean, I'll obviously share that with you. Everybody, remember, this is Freedom Business. I want to give a shout out to the first responders and other frontline workers. God bless you. I want to thank our friends at Warren Henry Automotive, Creco AI, Carlson Integrated, the NFL Alumni Association, the Bergstrom Center for Real Estate Studies, and I want to thank our listeners. Thank you very much. Go to our Facebook page, our other social spots, like our show, tell your friends, join our community, give us feedback and comments. We're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, everything. We'll have the show up almost immediately on LinkedIn in a raw version, and Regan will have it uh, pretty much polished up and professionally presented well, within a few hours. And we'll put that up on social media, too. Remember, next week is show six. My 600th show, we'll be, we'll be interviewing my first guest, Richard Swordlow. We'll also have John Crossman on, as well as a special guest. We'll be talking about minority participation in the real estate industry and how to increase that. It's going to be a tremendous show. It'll have tremendous social impact, and it'll be fun. So make sure to tune in at noon on Wednesday. And remember, the person wants to do something finds a way, the other finds an excuse. Now go out there, make it happen. God bless you. God bless America. Reagan, rock it. I'm out.